Hello and welcome to Baiju's IAS. Welcome to Daily Quiz. First up, an announcement. Join me this Friday, 8 p.m. and we will discuss the constitutionality of the three farm laws and the recent Supreme Court order. Now let's get started and look at question number one. How does higher levels of ammonia affect aquatic life? Statement number one. It is difficult for aquatic organisms to sufficiently excrete the toxicant. It leads to toxic buildup in internal tissues and blood. It leads to aquatic organisms reproduce faster and it decreases pH levels in the body. Select the correct option from below. Yes, because of higher levels of ammonia, it is difficult for aquatic organisms to sufficiently excrete the toxicant. It does lead to toxic buildup in internal tissues and blood but we don't know whether it leads to aquatic organisms to reproduce faster there is no such research and it does not decrease instead it increases the pH level in the body so statement 3 and 4 wrong statement 1 and 2 correct A is the right answer what is the context the Delhi Jal board in a petition before the Supreme Court it has said that increased ammonia level has impaired its water treatment plants and a drinking water and health crisis loom large in Delhi. Now let's look at question number two. Consider the following statements regarding the Treaty of Sogoli and which of these statements is or are correct. What is the context? This is today's the Hindu newspaper and there is a column India Nepal relations in a new transition. Let's look at the options. This treaty was signed after the Anglo Nepalese or Gurkha war in 1816 and it demarcates the border between India and Nepal. According to Article 5 of this treaty, Nepal renounced all claims to the territories east of River Kali and the interpretation of what lies to the east of River Kali lies at the heart of the present border dispute. Which of these statements are correct? Statement number one, almost everyone would know, those who have been reading newspapers regularly, that statement one is correct. Yes, this treaty was signed after the Gurkha War in 1816 and it is this treaty which demarcates the border between India and Nepal. But according to Article 5 of this treaty, Nepal renounced all claims to the territories west of River Kali, and the present day dispute is not about the interpretation of what lies to the east or west of River Kali. The interpretation of the source of River Kali lies at the heart of the present border dispute. So statement 2, statement 3, wrong. Only one is correct. A is the right answer. Now let's look at previous year's question paper, prelims 2019, building Kalyana Mandapas was a notable feature in the temple construction in the kingdom of Vijayanagara. So D is the right answer. Now let's look at question number four. But first up, let's look at the context. 17 year old sexually abused by over 40 men. And the Kerala police has arrested 33 under various sections of the POXO Act. Which of the following is correct regarding the protection of children from the Sexual Offences Act of 2012? This act defines a child as any person below 16 years of age. The act casts a legal duty upon a person who has knowledge that a child has been sexually abused to report the offense. The police are also required to bring the matter to the attention of the Child Welfare Committee within 24 hours of receiving the report. The act defines a child as somebody who is below the age of 18 so statement number one is incorrect. Yes, you might be confused whether it's a legal duty or just a moral duty. But if it is a duty imposed by the law, it is a legal duty. So yes, it is a legal duty upon a person who has a knowledge that a child has been sexually abused. He or she has to report the offense to the police. And once the crime is reported to the police, within 24 hours, the police has to bring this matter to the attention of the Child Welfare Committee. So statement 2 and 3, correct B, is the right answer. Now let's look at question number 5. Dr. Patabi Sitaramaya 
contested the 1939 elections of the president of Congress against Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose after an important leader withdrew his name. Who was the leader? What is the context? Netaji's birth anniversary to be celebrated as Parakram Devas, says the Union Culture Ministry. 1938, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, he won the election of the President of the Indian National Congress. He decided to contest the election again in 1939. Mahatma Gandhi, he was not too happy with Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. And Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose also was not sure whether he would win or not. Pandit Nehru was in Europe and once he returned, he was reluctant to contest the election. Then Mahatma Gandhi asked Molana Obul Kalam Azad to contest the election, but he withdrew the name. And then Patabi Sitaramaya contested the election and he lost. And when Patabi Sitaramaya lost, that's when Mahatma Gandhi said, it is not the defeat of Patabi Sitaramaya, it is my defeat. So who was the leader who withdrew his name and then Patabi Sitaramaya contested the 1939 election? It is Molana Obul Kalam Azad. Now let's look at question number six. Which of the following is correctly matched? Why? Because we were talking about Ministry of Culture which has decided to celebrate Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose's birth anniversary as Parakram Devas. Archaeological Survey of India is under the Ministry of Culture. And something else, there is another context. Red Fort, the Archaeological Survey of India has decided to close Red Fort to visitors on Tuesday after dead crows found on the premises tested positive for bird flu. And something else as well. When we are talking about dead crows, yesterday in our daily quiz, we spoke about Indian star tortoise. Please make a correction. I said that Indian star tortoise is critically endangered according to IUCN red list. No, it is vulnerable. So I apologize for the mistake, but please correct it. The IUCN status of Indian star tortoise is not critically endangered. It is vulnerable. So which of the following is correctly matched? Who deciphered the ancient Indian Brahmi script? Was James Princip? Yes. Who was the first director general of Archaeological Survey of India? Alexander Cunningham. Who was the one who translated Bhagavad Gita into English? The first one, Charles Wilkins. And all of them are correctly matched. D is the right answer. Now let's look at fact of the day, Katsa, or countering America's adversaries through Sanctions Act. What is the context? The context is military specialists. They are to get S-400 training in Moscow because India signed a $5.43 billion agreement with Russia for the supply of these long-range air defense system, which is S-400 Triumph system. Although the agreement has been signed, but still there is a threat of Katsa. What is Katsa? Katsa is a law that lets impose sanctions against America's adversaries. And who are these American adversaries? Iran, North Korea and Russia. Any country which conducts transactions of significant nature with these three adversaries of United States, sanctions will be imposed against those countries by United States. And since we have an agreement for the supply of S-400 defense system with Russia, so there is a threat that America might impose sanctions against us as well because of our dealings with Russia. That is what is called Katsa. That is it from our daily quiz. See you on Friday, 8 p.m. live on our YouTube channel and we will discuss the constitutionality of the three farm laws and the recent Supreme Court order. Thank you for being with us. Have a great day.